After a grueling seven weeks of the regular season, the Illustrated playoffs are... Wait, is that Bean Soldier? After going undefeated in the season, Frostcaster Bean Soldier is here to take on the Firecaster Shady Penguin in their quarterfinal match. These casters have played once before, and it ended in heartbreak for Shady as he pulled off the powerful Blazers OTK, but was unable to close out the game. But he is here for revenge today as they battle it out in their quarterfinal match for the honor of being immortalized as a devoted Divine Rune in the Illustrials. The Illustriad has been an incredible time and an incredible showcase of Set 2 Frostfall. But did you know that Set 3 is right around the corner? In fact, it is currently on LGS shelves and pre-orders ship out in just a week. So make sure to head on over to shopelestrials.com and order some Daybreak so you can get it as soon as possible. With that, let's see what our lone Cryo Scorch is bringing for his quarterfinals match. What's up, my Nimbugs? It's your boy Josh from the Illustrionauts, and somehow we made it into Top Cut undefeated to take on all of the Imperawats again. Um, this week, we are up against Shady Penguin um, in a best of three. Very glad that we're finally in best of three. And I'm kind of expecting him to bring probably regular fire. Um, this is not a deck that he's had a ton of success with over the course of the season, but I think in a best of three environment, it would thrive a lot better. So we have tricked out our deck to try and beat regular fire with the main deck. Um, this is typical, just water fives, water good stuff, um, that we should be able to out anything that he puts in our way. Even if he does play fives, I think we're in a really good spot. So good chunk of Elestrals. He also has two Lava Lith. We're gonna meet him with the double Lava Lith right back. Um, as well as a bunch of defenders and a lot of pressure with all of our fives. We are rocking the double earthquake, double resting this week. Um, I have not been playing a whole lot of removal up until this point, um, but I think I'm definitely going to need it, especially because I don't know what type of list that Shady's going to be on. Removal is going to be key. And some consistency tools with double nectar, obviously three ambrosia, one of the best cards in the game. Uh, we are playing double Atlantis. Uh, this will be... Very interesting when you see our side deck, depending on what type of deck Shady decides to bring. And then our typical lineup of counter runes that will be good for this matchup. The The one thing that's going to be interesting, Poison Tip, if he is playing Trifernal, is not good. Not a good card, especially if we're going second. So we might have to side that out. Our side is where I like to think that things get spicy. You know, the Aparawats have been taking this Trifernal list a lot to all these best of one matches. Trifernal, historically, not very good in best of three. And we're going to punish him if he plays it. So, playing the one copy of Eritakwa, this doesn't matter. This is just if he plays like a Bag of Winds uh, cheese deck and he puts something in defense. So, this is just an extra out to that stuff. But this isn't the spicy card. The spicy stuff is third Atlantis. Two rise. I don't have three. Wish I did. But, 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 but. We're playing elephants, baby. Um, the idea is that he's been setting a ton of his powerful runes like Helios Chariot Ride, which we are going to be signing as well into the Trifernal matchup. Um, but if we're able to rip out Blazeruses and Exalt Flares and keep him from having the combo pieces that he needs to kill us, we win the game. So, if he's on Trifernal, we're going to side all 11 of these cards into our deck, and uh, we should probably win. So, Shady, I wish you the best of luck. It's time for a rematch. Bean Soldier is ready for Shady to run it back with the Trifernal list, and has crafted a deck that can beat it. He's bringing a fairly standard fives list, which we've seen from him a lot this season, but with some very interesting spice in the side deck. In preparation for this matchup, he has brought... Typhlint, a card which is not seen play in the Illustriad yet, but looks to prevent Shady from establishing the Trifernal combo in hand, or to potentially punish him if he is not aggressive enough and start ripping his hand apart with Ivory and Typhlint. A very interesting way to take advantage of the best of three environment and give his deck more outs to what he expects from Shady. But it all relies on what Shady is bringing for this match. So let's hear it from the man himself, how he plans to defeat the last undefeated caster. So what is my game plan going into top eight? Well, honestly, Bean is undefeated and the options are not looking great for me in my card pool. However, uh, what I have done here is I have decided to go full defensive. I don't think there's any other way for me to beat 
Josh, uh, this is like my only, my only game plan is to go ahead and use the power of Hephaestus to grab ourselves a bag of wins and make a defensive beast that Beans is unable to remove. That is my whole game plan. And it's not gonna be fun. <laughs> not gonna lie. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of stall, but this does seem to be my only way to win against fives is really leaning into a defensive arrow mare, specifically arrow mare because uh, Bean started playing uh, Bean started playing Sorlets, which I'm playing as well. Um, but Sorlet can't switch the position of, of an Elestral that is enchanted with wind. So Aramare in defense cannot be switched by that. Aramare in defense also doesn't care about Tsunami because it's already in defense. Aramare in defense usually doesn't care about Galaxy's effect because uh, it would just be another five, right? Galaxy becomes a five unless he has Atlantis out and he's buffing it and he can get over it. That's a problem, obviously. That's a, that's a very big problem for me, which is why I am running the double Island of Aeolia because Aramare with Island of Aeolia makes it so that it doesn't care about Galaxy. Aramare with Bag of Winds pretty much doesn't care about anything that I can think of looking back at Beans' uh, deck list throughout the Illustriad. Now, obviously, if I have Aramare in defense and Bag of Winds here, if Bag of Winds gets removed, I'm in trouble. It seems like some of the only removal he would have, though, would be Thunderstorm, uh, which I think he has access to, but he hasn't played it once. And it might be a tech card in a side deck for sure. Um, but uh, realistically, I think this is pretty impervious. He has Lava Lith, right? But I'm running double Gorgon's Gaze, uh, which will protect Bag of Winds. And then I'm also running double Bag of Winds. So it's gonna become like a double Bag of Winds, double Lava Lith. Do I have the Gorgon's Gaze to make it so the Lava Lith doesn't proc? After the Lava Lith uh, has, pro ha like, has been casted, can I destroy it with anything? Realistically, is Sorlet's gonna have to be that guy, right? Sorlet's gonna go ahead and put Lava Lith in defense uh, and, and run it over. That's that's pretty much the game plan there. Uh, then for game two, so basically my, my, my plan is game one, defensive stall, see if we can learn everything we can, get as much intel as we possibly can from that game. Uh, and then I'm running the Cinders in the main deck because I genuinely think this is gonna come to a deck out. I think that I just wanna make sure that I'm ahead by playing Cinder and making my opponent mill three is like, it's it's just gonna it's this is like one of the last things I would do in the game is if I have three cards left and he has three cards left I want to just drop cinder and finish it that way uh outside of that that's my only game plan man I'm running fives because maybe the game goes differently and I want to just trade into the back row that could be the case now for my side deck the plan is to essentially have the ability to swap this entire thing out just for OTK Waspire Exalt Flare and Chariot right so the idea would just be, hey, we're gonna do what we did in, against Coder in game seven, uh, week seven, which was Exalt Flare into Exalt Flare into Waspire. And that will be, I think that's 12, da 10, 10 to 12 damage right there on one turn. So that would obviously be a very expensive turn for me. I also need like 10 spirits in deck to do that, but uh, it's totally possible, can be done. I have done it. Uh, and my hope is that the first super slow defensive game works out perfectly where I can actually win and then I can sneak attack. And I'm only gonna swap my deck out if game one is like either completely horrendous and doesn't work and I just wanna have fun for game two and I recognize my loss, or if I feel like Josh, he's cheek, if, if, he, if he has an out and he realizes that he has an out, uh, then I'll just swap the game plan up. So if I win game one, usually don't fix anything, but this is just in case I need to pivot. Shady has correctly predicted the strategy of Bean Soldier and is bringing a very interesting strategy here. His plan is to sit on some big defense Celestials and stall out this top cut match and take the wind out of Bean Soldier's sails. To pair with this strategy, he's got fives to help back up his big defense Celestials and cinders to make sure he's got the most cards in deck if we go to deck out. His side deck is a very interesting smokescreen he can use if things don't go to plan with the idea of punishing Bean Soldier if he doesn't expect the Waspire OTK in game two, just like how he did to Distant Goder in their week seven match. And with that, the stage is set for our quarterfinals match here between Bean Soldier and Shady Penguin. It looks like we have Shady Penguin going first, potentially going to expend to draw here. He's going to go ahead and set one rune and pass on over to Bean Soldier. Slow start here from Shady. And Bean Soldier taking advantage of the slowness, going for Nectar of the Gods, gonna draw two, see what he's gonna be able to get off the top here to potentially punish Shady for not playing aggressively enough here. He's got the Smoltuga in attack position. He's gonna go ahead and search out that Necrof from his deck so that he has a great play for next turn as well that threatens any five or lower Lestros that Shady decides to play. 
uh, with that potential beat over and the burn damage. He's going to set one rune in the back row and then swing for one damage with Smoltuga. Shady is really seriously considering here. This very much reads as Shield of Achilles in the back row for him if he's sitting thinking for that long. He's going to just go and take the damage. Probably the right play to go for here. And he is going to play out air bear josh is just as confused as i am with this play this is aeromare with water under it a very surprising thing for josh to see as aeromare is going to declare into smoltuga and take it out the water enchantment to make sure there's no tsunami punish uh, very interesting play here from Shady. Wants to take advantage of the board, but he knows that this Necroft is in hand, and Josh will be able to likely punish here unless Shady does have some live back row. Now, we are reading that he probably has Shield of Achilles back there, but it's... it's it's potentially not going to be the greatest for him if he has to shield the Necroft here. There are probably better targets he'd rather be shielding than a Necroft. He will shield the Necroft on the attack declaration into the Aeromare, though. Going to bounce the Necroft back to Bean Soldier's hand, paying two from Shady, and keeping this Aeromare on board. Looks like we're going to go ahead and play some sort of Wind of Lustral here. He's considering maybe he has multiple options in hand. He's actually going to re- Ascend! He's ascending over Aeromare into Galaxy! A very interesting decision here. This will play around a potential Sorlet punish. This will potentially punish a Necroft immediate play from Bean Soldier on the crackback, uh, where they will both end up taking damage from it. And Shady's just going to swing direct for two damage into, into Bean Soldier, putting them both at 14. And Bean Soldier with the Lava Lith right back, going to target down one of Shady's back rows here. He's considering whether he is going to chain that back row or not. It looks like he is. He is. He will chain the Gorgon's Gaze to prevent the Lava Lith from both destroying that back row and attacking. Very important here. Absolutely a great play from Shady. He's also going to play using one of the spirits from Galaxy to keep some of those spirits in spirit deck. Very critical for him here. So he's going to maintain the Galaxy while also making sure that Lava Lith isn't beating over it. He's going to go ahead and start off his turn by playing the Aramare in defense position. Uh, we knew that this was his plan all along. He said it in his deck profile, and he's doing it right away. We've got Bag of Winds onto the Aeromare. You can see Josh considering, maybe a little a little shocked that this is what's happening. He was not expecting Aeromare Bag of Winds to be what he was going up against today. I can say with that as a fact, as I, I did help him test for this match. Uh, we, neither, no, one, no one on the Cryo Scorches could have expected Bag of Winds Aeromare. Uh, but Bean Soldier, after Shady passes, putting the Galaxy to defense position, interestingly enough, uh, he's going to play Dratagwa, recovering two, and he's going to attempt to swing the Lavalith over the now defense position Galaxy. I guess Shady understanding that there's no way he could protect the Galaxy, so he's going to put it to defense position. Uh, it looks like Shady just drew for turn and passed we're right back over to bean soldier's turn where he's re-enchanting dratagwa gaining two back to his spirit deck and shady is going to be casting a nectar of the gods to draw to from his deck he's trying to dig further into his deck get some more cards to potentially deal with the threat of this lava lith at the moment aramir cannot be outed by the lava lith as it is at a two a seven defense gaining two from bag of winds but there is absolutely a concern that there is some sort of way for Josh to be able to uh, take down this, this Aramare either by battle or uh, by popping Bag of Winds and then being able to swing over it. And it is clear that Josh is digging through his deck with another Nectar of the Gods here. He really wants to try and see whatever out he might have in the deck. There, there's got to be a very specific series of of cards from him in order to be able to out this and it really it is likely normal cast lava lith over lava lith to pop the bag of winds and then pray that that other back row isn't live but shady penguin playing hephaestus detaching he's gonna search out a second bag of winds which will ruin bean soldier's goal here of taking out the first bag of winds, you can, <laughs> I can hear him, you might not be able to hear him, might be play it back. Bean Soldier goes, oh my goodness, to the re reaction of a second bag of winds hitting the Aramir. He was not expecting that whatsoever. This Aramir is statted up. 
So it looks like he is he's enchanting Dratagua here, but uh, misplaced the Dratagua. He's going to get back two Water Spirits to his Spirit deck. And he's just going to go ahead and pass from there. Shady going to draw for turn. Consider his options. And he's passing right back. This is this is a very stalled out game here. We've got a nine defense Aramere. We are re-enchanting the Astrabbit to keep digging from Bean Soldier's side. He's gonna pick whatever that favorite card was, put it in his hand and pass back to Shady. Shady draws for a turn and passes back to Bean Soldier. Bean Soldier is going to run out the Ambrosia as if recovering with Dratagua wasn't enough. He needs to go ahead and grab a couple more from his underworld. Getting two, actually, he didn't have enough for the full three. He only had two spirits in Underworld to bring back. He's got a very large board. It's weird to see that he's got 12 in spirit deck. It looks like he is ascending over the Lava Lith with a water spirit into Lava Lith. All right. And he's taking the spirits off of Dratagwa and putting them onto Lava Lith. Hold on. So... He's got five, six spirits under this Lava Lith using the effect to take down the backer, which was a shield of Achilles. If he has Atlantis in hand, this is an absolutely massive Lava Lith that will be able to beat over the Arrow Baron. That's exactly what it is. This is a 10 attack Lava Lith that will be able to swing over the Aeromare. A perfect series of cards that he was able to dig into his deck for with the Astravit, the Nectar of the Gods, passing back and forth, drawing for a turn, digging, 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 and he's able to beat over the Aeromare. There's nothing Shady can do. He loses his entire board presence in one turn and takes two damage from the Astravit as well, putting him on three spirits left in deck. Shady looking a little deflated after that. Unlikely that there is much more that he can do from there. He's looking at his hand and he scoops from there. An insane turn from Bean Soldier to be able to out. Such a large defense stat. Aeromare, wow. And he, you know, he dug well and he was able to see what he needed. We're going to hop into game two here. And here we are in game two. Looks like... Shady Penguin is going first. Going to start off with Nectar of the Gods. Worked very well for his opponent, Bean Soldier, last game. He's going to go ahead and rip it to start. Drawing two cards. Trying to establish maybe a little bit more of a board state than he was able to last game going first. He's going to go ahead, run out, probably an Astrabbit here. That's exactly what it is. Astrabbit in defense position. Look at the top three cards of his deck. Picking his favorite. Adding it to his hand. He's, he's considering it. He's got three solid cards here, it looks like. He's going to add the card to hand and immediately pass on over to Bean Soldier. Bean Soldier starting off with the Typhlin in defense position. Going to randomly discard a card out of Shady's hand. We're going to see which one he's going to hit here. He's going to actually... He's there. He's rarely deciding with a dice. He hits number five. Leaves it up to fate. He hits a Hephaestus. That could be very big because that might have been Shady's main way to get Bag of Winds out of deck other than just hard drawing it. So that consistency piece is now gone. Shady Penguin going to start off his turn by casting a Necroft with water underneath it, playing around the Tsunami. And... <laughs> Bean Soldier wants to keep the Typhlin around. He's going to Gorgon's Gaze to protect his Typhlin from being beaten over by the Necroff. Means that he might have an Ascension play here. We might see the Ivory. He's ascending over the Typhlin. Is this going to be an Ivory? There's no way. There's no way. Is it? It's Ivory. Oh, no way. <laughs> so Ivory is going to come out here. He's going to expend a Water Spirit to special cast a Typhlin from the Underworld in attack position, which will hit another random card out of Shady's hand. This is absurd. He lets the roll of the die hit it again, and he hits Smoltuga. That's a pretty solid hit. That was an important piece that Shady may have needed if he did indeed side into the Waspire uh, OTK burn strategy. That, that Smoltuga may have been the way to make sure that he got to that Exalt Flare. So that was very important to hit with the Typhlin. He's going to hit the Ivory over the, uh, the Necroff. Shady will take a damage. We're back over to Shady. He's going to play Smoltuga. It will resolve, and he's looking through his deck. 
I guess he wasn't too fed up about the uh, the Smotuga getting ripped because he's got another one in hand, ready to play, ready to search out that Necra from deck. And he's going to go ahead and Bag of Winds. Assuming that's probably onto the Ast Rabbit. Uh, going to just make a very large defense stat at Elestral here at 2-7. Going to be hard for Josh to be able to out this. He's done it before, though. He's already got Ivory on field. If he's got an Atlantis, it goes... No way. Is this a second Ivory? Oh, no. Okay, okay. We're ascending into the Ast Rabbit here. Very smart heads-up play. This is to get the Typhlet in the Underworld so that Ivory can bring it back with this effect and keep hand-looping, hand-ripping Shady Penguin here. He's going to go ahead and expend for the Ivory, bringing back Typhlet, taking another card out of Shady's hand. Only four cards in hand. He's gone from six to five, now to four. And we're going to hit number card number two. It is... Island of Aeolia, very interesting. Potentially, it makes sense that he doesn't play it there. That, you know, it, it it's not doing anything for him on field. It can get outed by an Atlantis. It's a card that we don't mind getting outed uh, by a discard from Typhlin. And it, this is confirmation here. It was Smoltuga, in fact, that was Bag of Winds, now being the one at seven defense. Looks like Shady is going to discard or expend a spirit to draw. And then he's just going to pass back. Bean Soldier again, ascending over Typhlin, building a very, very scary board here. Is this, this is Dratagua here. All right, he's going to recover two spirits from the underworld. If that was a galaxy, that might have been lights out for, for, for Shady Penguin. It would have been a, an easy way for Josh to be able to out the seven defense Smoltuga. He's going to use the ivory effect, bringing back Typhlin. Going to rip another card out of Shady's hand. We're at four card, five cards back in hand yet again after the expended draw. We're going to hit number four. Lucky card number four. What is it? It is the Necroft that was searched off of the Smoltuga. We're probably not too upset about that getting hit there. We're going to Ambrosia here, trying to keep ourselves healthy. Trying to make sure that that doesn't get ripped out of the hand by the Typhlin. We're going to recover three Spears from the Underworld to see what kind of information we can glean from this. It looks like... Double wind and a fire. This potentially reads another bag of winds from Shady, or at least he's preparing for one. Wants to make sure he has the wind in spirit deck for it. He expends to draw, and it looks like Josh here is going to re-enchant Rabbit, trying to dig a little bit deeper, probably for an Atlantis here to try and out this Smoltuga, maybe for a Galaxy to try and out the Smoltuga. Lots of options here. He's going to put Ivory to defense position, even bigger than the Smoltuga at an eight defense potentially going to be difficult for Shady to out here. Not that he's trying to out it. His goal, as you know, as we know from his game plan, from his deck profile, is to stall out the game here and create game states like this where Josh is just unable to out this Smoltuga. The question is, though, will Bean Soldier be able to hit the out faster than Shady Penguin can? We are re-enchanting to the ivory. This reads absolutely as an Atlantis in hand. This means that we're going to be playing Atlantis, gets ivory to a 9-11 stat line, and Smoltuga is going to be there at a 3 and 8, I believe, if I can do my simple, you know, basic math here. This might be lights out for Shady. There's a lot of spirits on Josh's board. He's been able to develop it very strongly over the past couple of turns, passing back and forth. Shady has nothing to protect. You can see him smiling. He knows the end is near. <laughs> Shady's saying he's in a very good position. Using the Ambrosia early is a very smart play from Josh. I agree. This is a very strong position for Josh here. Going to be able to Ivory swing over the Smoltuga, Typhlin for one, Ast Rabbit for three, and Dratago for another two. That is a total of six damage that Shady is going to have to expend, putting him down to five spirits left in deck. A lot of cards in hand for Shady, but what can he do? He concedes from there. There's nothing he can do to out such a strong board from Josh. <laughs> he just said he was very close to scooping game two as well. Wow. 
An incredible game two from Josh, really showing off how strong some cards that can be very underlooked uh, in, in constructed play can be shown off really well in the Illustriad, especially in a best of three environment where you can plan for your opponent's decks and based off of what they're playing, swap into a different strategy. Looks like Shady was not, he did not decide to go into the Exalt Flare uh, Waspire Burn strategy. Potentially could have been something that would have paid off for him there and let him, uh, you know, create a game state that was much harder for Josh to, to deal with. But regardless, congratulations to both players for making it this far, making it into quarterfinals. It's uh, sad to see Shady go, but congrats to making it to quarterfinals in the first place. It's not an easy thing to do, but he did it. And, and Josh moves on to the semifinals. The last remaining undefeated player, the last remaining Cryo Scorch. It's, it's insane. Uh, make sure to like, comment, tell me how you... <laughs> you think Josh can do it? I'm a believer! All my Josh believers rise up in the comments. Subscribe, we got more Illustriad quarterfinals coming. And on to the semifinals after that. Very excited to see how these go. See you in the next one. Peace out, my Nimbugs.